Welcome to another episode of Pimp My iPad. In this episode, we take a look at apps. In what seems like a universe full of apps on the App Store, it can be hard to find the exact one you're after. In this episode, we take a look at launching apps, finding apps via the App Store, online services, and actual iPad applications as well, and finally at moving, deleting, and updating your apps. All of these are important skills to have to get the most out of your iPad. So first up today, we'll start off with launching apps. The easiest way to launch an app is to launch it directly by clicking on it. So we'll just launch up UQ Medicine now. And as you can see, it's launching. It only takes a couple of seconds. And that's basically it. The app is now launched, and that's the easiest way to do it. And there's an the example of Pinch to Home Screen again. The next way to launch an app is to use a search feature. So if we just swipe across here and go up to search, and we'll type in Dropbox. And as you can see, Dropbox comes up there, and now we've launched Dropbox via search. The third way to do it is to use Siri. So we hold down on our home button, and we t say launch Dropbox. And there again, it launched Dropbox by voice command or via Siri. And so they're the three main ways of launching an app. Now to finding apps. One of the most common ways to find an app is via the App Store. Along the top here, we have featured items such as multiplayer games, uh, start your own business apps, and any of the core apps Apple is recommending that week. So these change from week to week. As we go down we have new and noteworthy and we have a range of other groups that Apple recommends as well such as what's hot and right at the bottom we have our quick links and our Apple ID and our redeem uh, buttons. So we just go to the app starter kit. This is one of the kits Apple puts together and just gives you some basic apps to get you started. Click on Facebook now, and I'll just show you what an app looks like in iOS 6. This shows the details, so here up the top we have screenshots of the app. It gives you an idea of what the app will look like once you've installed it. Just go back along. Just go down, this gives you the details of the app, and also some information about the size and the developer. You can click on the developer and find out the related apps. You can also go along and click on ratings and reviews to have a look at uh, their ratings. So Facebook is rated pretty high because it's pretty popular. So most of them are five or four stars. And finally, you can go along to related apps and see which apps are related. So Facebook pages is a related app and we'll just load it up here. And again, you've got your details and related apps is Facebook. You can send an app via mail, message, Twitter, or Facebook uh, to friends and recommend it to others if you wish. So just opening up Facebook pages via the App Store. I've already installed it, so it will actually load it straight away. So if you've already installed the app, it will load it straight away. If you haven't installed it, it will start installing it when you click that button. Back to the App Store. And that's basically it to look at an individual app in the App Store and its basic details and information. The next feature in the App Store to take advantage of is Categories. So we'll just load up the Medical category. And shown here are New, What's Hot, paid and free apps within the medical category. And you can swipe along, just swipe to left to see more apps in each of the main groups. So there's quite a few apps here. And you just need to swipe down to be able to see all the main groups, so free is down at the bottom. And that's your medical category.
So while categories are a good way of seeing all the medical apps, charts give you an opportunity to see the best apps in that category. So right now we're at all categories and this just shows you all the apps on the app store, which ones are the best free apps, which ones are the best paid apps and the top grossing apps. So there's a large number of them. We'll just go to medical apps now so we can sort by medical apps and see the charts for them. And just loading up. And again, we've got paid apps, we've got free apps, and we've got top grossing apps. So it's just taking a couple seconds to load here now. And there we go. Paid apps on the left. And I'll just keep on going down. You can scroll down as far as you like. It's just ranked. Same with the free apps category. And same with the top grossing apps. So there's a large range of apps that you can find in top charts. So we'll just load it up Grey's Anatomy. You can see all the related apps are apps by the developer and apps that customers have bought as well. And again, just top grossing on the end. So they're probably the most popular apps overall because they sort of include the free apps and the paid apps together in one group. Using search in the iTunes store or app store is a great way of finding the specific apps you're after. So in my case, we'll look up radiology as one of the groups of apps we want to find. We'll just type in radiology. As you can see, it comes up with 150 different search results. We can refine these search results by price. So we can switch to paid, for example. Uh, we can find them by category. Radiology should be pretty specific already, but as you can see, we lost three apps just by selecting medical. And you can also order by relevance, popularity, ratings, and release date. So we'll select ratings. This will be the star ratings. So those with a higher star rating will be put near the top. And as you can see, there's a list of different apps now. So these are paid apps. So there's different prices, as you can see there. We can go back to price and sort by price. So now we've got free and paid apps together. We can select popularity. And you should know that um, as I'm doing this, the apps at the top are changing. So it's really giving you a more refined search if you're after something in particular. And maybe the best app that's at the right price for you. So now we'll just go to one final feature in the App Store. Just navigate back to the home page and go down to App Collections. Once we've selected that, we can go down to Apps for Healthcare Professionals. And this list was put together by Apple to give us a basic guide of some of the useful apps available to healthcare professionals. So we have reference apps, education apps, EMR and patient monitoring apps. We also have imaging apps, point of care apps, and personal care apps. So this is a good place to look for some apps that Apple and with the consultation of MDs and other doctors have put together uh, to start. As far as I'm aware, this is only available to US and UK accounts. It's not currently available in Australia. Aside from the App Store, another good place to find apps is online. We have a number of options available to us. Um, these include iMedical Apps is a great place to start. These guys review a whole bunch of different apps each week. The iPad, 
iPhone and Android um, services. And we can click specifically just to see the iPad app reviews. So we'll just load that up. So here are all the recent reviews uh, for iPad apps. And I'll just show you a demonstration of one of their review articles. So we have this orthopedic app here. And so they normally include a bit of detail about the app, some screenshots that they've taken. And down the bottom there's normally a nice summary. So we'll just scroll down to the bottom now. And they have a summary of price, likes, dislikes, and an overall conclusion on the app. And generally whether it's worth it or not. Just going back through the review. And they also have top 10 free medical apps, which is a list they've created of the apps they think basically each health professional should have. So this is their top 10 free iPad medical apps that they've done. And one of the most popular ones is obviously Medscape. So you can look at the other nine on iMedical apps when you find the time. Each week on lifeinthefastlane.com, which is where this is being hosted, Tessa Davis uh, is running the Tech Tool. Tech Tool Thursdays are about, again, highlighting apps that are potentially useful to clinicians. And again, they'll include screenshots, pros, cons, cost, uh, a reflection on the clinical content, and an overall assessment of the app. Finally, we have Appalicious, which is run by Yahoo. Appalicious provides a good, I guess, database of apps on everything. So not just medical apps, but the best sort of iPad apps overall as well. So just having a look here at the best iPad apps, they've also got iPhone there mentioned as well. And there's a whole bunch of different lists available. But we'll just take a look at uh, the medical apps category now. Just load it up. And so they have lists by editors and editor picks, but also there's a whole bunch of user-created lists. So you can go onto this website and create a list yourself that you want to share with other people. So I'll just demonstrate one of the lists now quickly. And we'll load up quick medical reference apps for practitioners. This is a relatively new list by the looks of it. And you can see a list of apps this person has recommended. So Hippocrates, Medscape, Prognosis, Medpage, and Skyscape are the apps they've recommended. So we'll click on Prognosis Your Diagnosis, which is one of the free apps available. And this is what the singular app looks like. So again, like the iTunes store, it gives you a review section which shows the details of the app, uh, what lists it's featured in, the cost, the price, the rating, and you can grab the app directly from this page and it'll refer you to iTunes. And that's an overview of some of the online services available. There are also a number of apps which can make finding apps easier. So today we'll have a quick look at Discover Apps and Apps Gone Tree. Discover is a service that allows you to search apps and look at how they're sort of interconnected in a web. So related apps will come up. So we'll just try a demo here with Medscape. Comes up with a number of apps that match that search term. And we want Medscape though, but you can scroll up and down and have a look at other ones that thinks might be relevant. So I clicked on Medscape and now we have a link of other apps that are potentially related to Medscape based on their data. And we can just click on another one, click on another one, and as you can see we can just open up this web of related apps. Each app icon shows a price and a rating. And now just opening up Medscape, you can get a full review of the app. So it gives you the details, just like the App Store. Scroll up and down, screenshots, 
you can scroll up and down again to have a look at how it'll look on your iPad. Then tweets on the application. And finally, any video reviews um, that their database finds. You can also click share at the top and share this app on Twitter, Facebook, by email or by message. So now just back to the main screen and you can see that I've added Medscape to the wish list. But we also have favorites, which is a list of our favorite applications. And we also have recommended apps. These apps are much more broad and are just based on Discover, not on your preferences. So as you can see, there's a whole web of apps here. And again, you can share this map via a number of different ways or save it to your own clipboard. And Discover Apps at the time of writing, I think was $2. So it's a potentially useful service to be able to find apps that are related to other apps that you're interested in. Next up, it's always useful to have some sort of service that you can use to find free apps or when apps go on sale. I use uh, Apps Gone Free as an example. And Apps Gone Free provides basically a list of apps that are on sale that day. There aren't too many medical apps, but there are plenty of general apps which can be useful. And it's always recommended that you download an app, even if you think it's only mildly useful, because somewhere down the track you might think, oh, I really wish I had that. And if you don't have it, you might have to end up paying for it. So again, grab the details from the iTunes store, ratings, and so on. You have your screenshots up the top. And you can share it with friends by messaging or Twitter again. So if we just go back to the main screen, you can scroll down and see all the apps that are free on that day. And there's quite a few on the day of recording, as you can see here. And you can also select different days, because sometimes the sale will run over a couple of days. So there's still items that are available free here, as you can see. And that's it pretty much for Apps Gone Free. Feel free to check out other services. Moving apps can be achieved by simply holding down on an app icon until it wriggles or jiggles. Then you can move it around as shown here, wherever you like. So it's still wriggling so it's still movable and I can drag it into a folder if I wish. So now it's in a folder. And I can drag it back out again. And that's basically how you can move apps. To add out, exit out of edit mode, you simply click the home button. The next most important step is deleting apps. Again, you hold down on an icon till it wriggles, then select the X in the top hand corner. It will then ask you if you are sure you wish to delete the app. Click yes and the app is deleted. Finally, updating apps can be achieved by going back to the app store where we were earlier in the episode. And I'll just shut down this open app for a second and then clicking on updates on the bottom taskbar. Here we have one up app which we can update and I simply click update and it'll begin to update. So this app is now updating and that's basically it to updating your apps. Simple as that.